And now, we will either be bringing our Drez Kerbal back or sending a probe out to Jewel. The Jewel contract one on I mean I could send crew I mean I think we've demonstrated that we can launch it with a crewed vessel and as long as we deploy it it would work but then again it's got the research resource survey scanner on it so that's gonna be bulky anyway we might as well send it on its own thing helmets are definitely squishable they're basically inflated helmets I mean I don't know I don't know if that's safe but We'll pretend. Is the moon squishable? Hmm. Well, it depends on what's doing the squishing. So going back from Drez to Kerbin, we need Kerbin 30 degrees ahead of Drez. To get from Kerbin to Jewel, we want it about there. 90 to 96 degrees ish, maybe a little bit more. Val and Jeb are still alive. I did sacrifice one Kerbal to the Kraken. Well, not really to the Kraken, to my negligence, but uh, we'll call it to the Kraken. What do you use stick for in case B? The joystick? To control the rockets? Game's lack of blue boxes? Well, there, there's, there's definitely a mod for it. Um. <laughs> If there isn't a, a TARDIS mod somewhere around, I, I can easily make one for you. Um, it's not exactly the most complicated thing to make. We sacrificed the Rory Kerman to the surface of Duna. Uh, the Dress Probe, it shouldn't be too different from it. This is a nice looking rocket too. Okay, so all of these new antennae that we got. I guess this one will have the range and it'll be neat uh, 0.1 tons maybe we should just put two of them uh, maybe we can counterbalance this antenna with battery we need we, we probably need RTGs really because I don't think this solar panel these solar panels aren't gonna be enough all the way at jewel, jewel. yes real solar system is the mods name is it fun uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, the, when you achieve things in it, it seems more meaningful, but it takes more time. It's not necessarily harder. You have to remember a few more things, um, but it's more of a time commitment. Yes, uh, in fact, I would recommend using it at 1.6.1. I mean, it's like... I mean, basically, you would have to treat it like starting from scratch in KSB. You're, you're, you're learning how to get to orbit, you're learning how to get to the moon. Basically, you'll be starting everything from scratch. So, But it's the same learning curve as when you initially entered KSP, right? I mean, if you... So it's just the same frustration, but it, it, if you go into it going like, well, I already know everything, then it's not going to work so well. But basically, if you treat it like a new game, then and do basically the same learning process you did with KSP, then it should be okay. Okay, so this is no longer a Drez probe. Get into orb get to orbit in RP1. Well, uh, RP1, I mean, I do recommend playing in science. I mean, you know, the thing is, I don't even know if there's a science mode for RO. So, uh, for those who aren't familiar with the realism overhaul and real solar system. Obviously if you change the solar system you're gonna have to change the tech tree and you're gonna have to change the contracts and all that so that's what RP0 and RP1 are. RP0 is a lot easier. RP1 is really involved. So they're realistic progression so they're a different tech tree and they have a whole contract system of their own. And I don't know if there's a realism overhaul science mode. I would say try sandbox initially. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, you wouldn't need either expansion. The realism overhaul, it really depends on... Okay, it really depends on what mods you add. Because 
there are the required mods, which are actually fairly small. And then you can choose the texture size for your planets in real solar system. So that could be as little as 200 megabytes or as much as one gigabyte. And um, then you uh, you have to consider your RAM. I tried the deployable science. I didn't get much science out of it though. We placed the little thingamajigs, but they didn't do a whole lot for me. I wasn't thinking of Soyuz 2.1V, and you know, so Soyuz 2.1V has that taper because it's still using the core of the Soyuz, so... No. We're gonna say that this is not Soyuz 2.1V. This is more like a stereotypical model rocket, actually. When you think about it. Okay... Here we go. Maybe we should send Kerbals to Jewel 2 on this window. I think so. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's safe to say that Kerbal Space Program has given me more enjoyment uh, than, you know, I should have expected from the price I paid for it. Okay, well, there's an encounter. We probably should do a mid-course adjustment. But we'll take the encounter for now, and then we'll fine-tune it later. Watch the uh, Indian Space Agency moon launch. Um, yeah, I think I made the model of the rover... Uh, not the rover, sorry, the lander bit. Uh, if you talk about Chandrayaan, I have a video. I made the part. I even made the rocket. I haven't been paying too much attention to Bepi Colombo, but I think I made that one too, didn't I? Waiting to match the real rival? No, I, mean, I might. I mean, <laughs> uh, let me let me see. Uh, now that you mention it, I completely forgot about it. <laughs> so I built it, and then I went, ah, whatever. But let's see, when does it arrive? I like the little Mio probe from. Japan, that was cute. Um, orbital insertion. Well, I, now I know why I forgot all about it, because this planned orbital insertion is December 5th, 2025. Man, we'll be on KSP 3 by then. <laughs> uh, asteroid is ejecting debris and it's really dangerous for Osiris Rex. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. And um, science. <laughs> It's science. But we'll see how that goes, I don't know. I don't know how dangerous it is for it. I made a size Rex too. Should I post that video? Most? You're going with most on that one? Higher than democracy? Yeah, well Plato was wrong about most things. And of course, he was a product of his times. Uh, to a large extent, Plato's thoughts on government are due to the fact that Athens lost to Sparta in the Peloponnesian War. And also, Athens decided to kill his teacher, Socrates. So, he was sort of pissed at democracy at the time. Yeah, no, don't, don't get history from YouTube videos. <laughs> Period. Not mine either. You know, uh, I, uh, any history thing in my YouTube videos should be meant as a suggestion for what you might look up some other way. Um, ideally, first person. Yeah, we. Ha I think Bluegill is certainly a fan. I've watched uh, some of Vintage Space's videos. Ah, that would really likes Vintage Space. I follow her on Twitter. Okay, so that'll be an automatic capture into Jewel Orbit there, with that node. My degree focus was US history of the 1960s. I mean, it's not actually written on my degree. I might be one of the last people to get a degree where the degree just says bachelor's in US history, uh, bachelor's in history, it doesn't even say US history, it doesn't even name a focus. 
Okay, so we'll have to wait on this one because we need to bring the crow back from Drez. Hopefully we won't forget about this poodle little probe. Oh, I guess I should do another... Uh, I guess we'll send crew to Jewel as well. Okay, so we want to send a Kerbal to Jewel. This may be a bad idea. I think... Have we... Has anybody not read Ignition? <laughs> yeah, I certainly have. Let me double check whether archive.org still has it so that everybody else can read it. And Deliver us the moon? Yeah, I need to play more of that. That was good. But let me build this uh, mission to... I haven't used the Mark II command pod at all. Let's try and send that this time to Jewel. I wrote a program that would automatically calculate uh, delta V and all the near-term windows if you just gave it the overall parameters, a spreadsheet with the overall parameters of any given system. That was using R. I mean, of course, people have made Transfer Window Planner, which is even better. That you can plop into any uh, installation with any system and it'll work. Calculated everything? Well, look on the bright side. Uh, you weren't doing like end body physics at least, or trying to do those kinds of deals. So, there's always something more painful. Well, we'll see. I don't know if this is going to give us enough delta V to actually land on anything. Still, I click on structural for decouplers. <laughs> Kerbal programmed me too well with that. Uh, could be for Soyuz, could be also for Titan 2. Because Titan 2, the upper stage, also hot fires. Okay, well that's the transfer. So now we need to build the rest of the rocket, which is supposed to actually launch it. I was... I'm thinking we, we're gonna end up Proton, I think, actually, Ernim. I think we're gonna end up Proton. So now we have 0.54 thrust weight ratio. We need a lot more than that. <laughs> Put the skiffs on the outside. Um, hmm. That's vacuum, too. I uh, heard that 0.54. Uh, maybe we just... But we need the thrust. So, I mean, I don't think the swivel will work, because it's not enough thrust, or the Reliant, really. Well, maybe the Reliant. But this has 240. Uh, this is cutting it pretty tight, overall. Oops. Now it's looking like one of those other UR things. So you strap on tanks? Uh, they're too small, I think. Because the problem is, they taper at the top so you can't stack anything on top of it. You'd have to put something at the bottom. And then they're too wide at the bottom. I mean, I guess they'll accommodate more bobcats. Either we do skiffs or we uh, use these and add bobcats. I think it looks pretty good right now. Well, this might not allow the Kerbal to um, land. We, we'll have to see. But should have enough to get the Kerbal to Jewel and back. It'll be a toss-up whether we land. We should pack some goo. There is no booster set. Oh, are you talking about after... I mean, we'll be in orbit after this stage. This is basically a single stage system. If I if we had less payload, I would be tempted to make this recoverable. Yeah, these aren't boosters. Yeah. I mean, if in an ideal situation what we would do is we would go ahead and put put the landing legs on and no, I didn't put the couple the, the couplers are expensive. <laughs> anyway, uh we put the landing legs on, put parachutes, put a controller and uh, do that business, right? We've probably even done something like this before, but um, Now I'm tempted to do that, but Fuel feed and dropping them Well, I mean, there's no good reason I mean, I guess Because the skiffs are the more efficient e engines so 
we would rather have them continue running and shut down the core engine than to uh, let them go and deal with the low ISP, I mean, comparatively lower ISP Bobcat engine for the rest of the flight. Well, these are, well, they're not boosters, they're welded on. They're like, that's the Proton thing, right? Proton, the little side bits on the Proton are not uh, separable. They're, they're fixed. That's why I said we were going to do something protonish. Anyway, we'll we'll deal with the recoverable aspect later. Uh, I'm gonna call it muon because why not? I mean, there are other particles, but they could be turned into separable boosters. Yeah, but again, the ISP reasoning leans towards just keeping them. Jeb. I mean, we've already deployed Val to Minmus, I suppose. Val's doing important science duties. We could send Rich Hat. But, I mean, what else are we gonna do with Jeb? We don't have a one-star pilot. We've got Jeb, we've got a three-star Rich Hat, and a three-star Tether. Oh, and then we have, we have a spare seat. I guess we could send a scientist. I mean, you know, it's not fair to uh, send Jeb and a level one. Well, they're mostly level one scientists. Okay, Jeb and Lola. Jeb and Lola. All right. Here we go. Spacebar. Oh, good. It's going up. <laughs> it's shuddering quite a lot, though. Final last word. Final last words. Famous last words, there we go. It's shaking like it's not sure whether or not it should fly apart. 61 degrees of freedom. <laughs> that's a good point. Is it 40 dimensions? I don't think that's quite right. Three dimensions is six degrees of freedom. I think it's triangular numbers, isn't it? So four dimensions is 10, right? Oh, oh, I'm burning too long. And a 5 is 15. I think that's how that works, isn't it? Or maybe I'm wrong. It's a little bit hard to visualize rotations in five dimensions. Yeah, I mean, of course, yeah, I'm also familiar with both metric and... I mean, we're supposed to be taught both metric and imperial in the United States. Not that everybody absorbs both. Very imperial. Well, reading 1960s rocket documents is very imperial unit heavy too. <laughs> but they really didn't need to do Rankin. They really didn't need to do Rankin. I just gotta say, and feet per second pisses me off. Feet per minute is fine because of airplanes, but feet per second pisses me off. What's wrong with feet per second? It just rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. PSI, yes. I will always measure pressure with PSI. I, I have the darndest trouble when we go to Pascals and so, I mean, I can calculate with it. I know the atmosphere is 101 kilopascals and such, but still, um, I still like PSI better. Bar, forget bar. I mean, who even uses bar? I mean, bar is like, if you set our atmosphere to be equal to, mon to one, but not quite. <laughs> I mean, it's like... Mm. It's 1.013 bar, isn't it? Yeah, it's 1.013 bar is one atmosphere. Yeah, millibars, uh, hectopascals. Yeah, uh, I don't use hecto. That's not right. Um, hun um, whatever. Yes, fine. Basically, I don't know if it's burn. Uh, the state of burn time is accurate. It might just be going by this stage. I don't know. We'll see. And go. No, it couldn't be. 
Okay. But I wasn't reading the stages right before, so I don't know if uh, I calculated the correct burn time. I don't think so. Let's stop it. Yeah, you know, this brings up the thing. I'm gonna have to actually design uh, basically a uh, water... Well, it's a water drilling unit, not really a water pump, but I guess it'd have to be a combination of water drilling unit and water pump for my little Mars game, right? Because the main character, your character, their job is basically manning uh, water drilling and pump unit and then trucking the water in. Excavate and probably excavate and heat up the ice. You have to drill probably a couple of kilometers down and then heat the ice up and then pump it up. So how much energy do you think it would take to pump water on Mars per per gallon, let's say? That is a complicated question. I've got a little base I'm pumping water. I need to know how many of the little reactors or or solar panels. We we should assume two kilometer depth. I think I I'll have to take a look. We are in a old um, hydrological region. It's a old river valley, but we're probably expecting the water to be fairly far down. That is not the pole. The pole would be easier. Anyway, let's see how close we are to... Well, we've got a jewel thingy. But we'll have another mid-course adjustment. Oh, well, you wouldn't have the fission in the well. I mean, uh, the fission reactor would be well away. And well, it'll be one of those crusty units that NASA is working on. Yeah, Mars windmills... I don't know how, I mean, considering the atmosphere is only 1% that of Earth. Would probably not be good. Groundwater is a mysterious thing. Well, okay, but let's say, let, let's put it this way. If the water was that easy to get to, we probably wouldn't need somebody working on a base to get to it. It'd be easy to... Um, just get out by automated processes, say, on Mars. We've got the player character controlling a base and having to truck it in, so the water is probably a little bit hard to get to in this particular location. Well, yes, you'll be playing Bruce Willis. Now, how much energy does Bruce, Bruce need here? That is the question. Yes, assuming you're playing Bruce Willis in this uh, Mars water recovery adventure. Well, that was a Val encounter, but Val is probably not powerful enough to make, or I guess, to make orbit. I'll just figure this out once we do the mid-course adjustment. I'll leave it be here. That'll be good enough for now. Okay, 